We're gonna talk about cooking for the holidays, paleo style, paleo holiday. First, what is paleo? It's an abbreviation of the word paleolithic, it means older or ancient, usually referring to the geological past. All right, so how could that possibly refer to cooking and preparing food? What is the paleo diet? Lauren Cordain, a PhD, published his book, The Paleo Diet, in 2002. It outlines reducing, eliminating, and replacing processed foods, which make up 60% of the calories purchased at the grocery stores in the United States, with unaltered foods that would have been available to a caveman. So, we're getting back to eating foods that were intended for humans, not processed, not designed to sit on a shelf for months and months on end, because they have to do all sorts of weird stuff to those foods to get them to stay on the shelf that long without spoiling. What foods are paleo approved? Meat, fish, eggs, seafoods, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and healthy oils, because a caveman would have had access to all that stuff. What foods are not paleo approved? Grains, sugars, potatoes, corn, dairy, legumes, alcohol, coffee, vegetable oils, and peanuts. Peanuts are usually the one that get people the most upset. You'll get around it, you'll be okay, I promise. Okay? Now one of the things I realize under what foods are not paleo approved, I have sugars, and then over my shoulder I happen to have three different types of sugars. <laughs> aware of this. <laughs> Honey was available to a caveman, whether or not he knew how to get it out of a comb, or maple syrup get it out of a tree. We're bending the rules a little bit because we have to prepare food for others, okay? People usually want something kind of sweet to their pumpkin pie. They don't want just pumpkin in a pie. Okay. Next thing on here. It says create your own paleo holiday feast. So, I showed you what foods are paleo approved and some that aren't. Can you think of some foods that you want to make for Thanksgiving or around Christmas time or whatever holiday you're celebrating this season or even next year that you're concerned because one of the not approved foods is going to be in there? Because then I want to help you swap it out. Mm -hmm. dressing. 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 What kind of dressing? That's an incredible example. Turkey dressing and the bread. Right. You would use bread. Yeah. Okay, so a couple of parts. The dressing. Have you ever made bone broth before? I just put some. Okay. Mm -hmm. We haven't, have we? No. Mm -hmm. So you can make some bone broth. It'll come out like gelatin. Um, there's a gelatin product here too that'll thicken it up for you. It has an incredible taste to it. So let's say you're making a turkey. You could make turkey bone broth and then use that as a dressing. You would add, se add seasonings to it. But that would be an incredible, that would taste great. So, on here, you put down dressing on the left and then turkey bone broth on the right. But she's talking about dressing. Stuffing. 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 Oh, like that. Yeah, I was gotcha. Like, not like <laughs> Thank you. Thank you yeah. for clarifying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, now I know what to do as far as like a, 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 a liquid dressing goes. Okay, I, I got that. Say that sounds more like a gravy. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought you meant. So, if we're gonna, going to avoid breads, there's a couple of things. Uh, we have. Ooh, would that work? <laughs> yeah, so you could use coconut flour and we have uh, a breakfast bread recipe. You could use that to make the coconut flour bread wow. and then add that to the dressing. Mm -hmm. And you would also want to use, you'd want to get the turkey with all the fixings on the inside and you'd want to add that too, make it like a, like a mincemeat pie, like an organ meat pie wow. with the coconut flour bread recipe that we can make sure you all get. We have those handouts. The breakfast cool. Before you go, we'll get them for you. Um, okay. That's what I would do. Thank you for clarifying. Okay. <laughs> Other things you're saying, Drew, I really want to make this, but it's on the no no list. Mashed potatoes. Yes. <laughs> Will you answer each other's questions? <laughs> go sweet potatoes instead of mashed potatoes. Yeah. Up until this year, white potatoes were on the dirty dozen list, which I'm going to talk about a little bit in here, loaded with pesticides usually. Switch over to sweet potatoes, there's less pesticides used. Sweet potatoes have a lot more B vitamins, a lot more nutrient than a white potato does. If you have picky eaters, it's really beautiful mm -hmm. if you make mashed potatoes and mix in just a few sweet potatoes and swirl them together just before you serve it, because it's like this white orange, it's, it looks like a dreamsicle 
but it doesn't taste like that. <laughs> it looks really cool though. So if you have some people who aren't going to go for just straight mashed sweet potato, you can make a combo. You're better off than just sweet white, straight white potatoes. Is there a difference no. between sweet potatoes and yams? Yes. Nutritionally, there's a difference. Mm -hmm. um, sweet potatoes typically test better. Test better. Uh, here when we do our muscle testing. Oh. Yeah. Another good substitute is mashed cauliflower. Which mm -hmm. is incredible. So that would be another way to sub it out. Mm -hmm. Butter in it. Oh, yeah, lots of butter in it. Yeah. <laughs> butter's not Butter would be counted. Oh, we call that a healthy oil. Yeah. Yeah. Caveman Matt might not be working a churn, <laughs> right. but it was a naturally occurring product back then. There's no adulteration of making butter. Yeah. Good. Other things you're thinking, Drew, I got to swap this out because I want to make it. I got a recipe for you. Yeah. Um, but I got a way to make a crust and I got you covered. We'll get to that. Yeah, well, pumpkin crust, not crust, coconut crust. Oh, it's we'll get to it. It's good. I made it last year. It was the first pumpkin pie on the table to disappear, and there were three different pumpkin pies on the table. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's good. What about cranberries? cranberries? You could do that. Okay. Yeah. What about cranberries? Cranberry sauce. I have a recipe for that too. Okay, cranberry sauce. Got you covered. I like this. I'm really glad I made this handout. Other stuff you're looking to swap. You gotta find a good mushroom soup. Yeah. Um, and then you gotta you gotta bake your own onions. That's the way you swap it out. Because the rest of it's the same. Green beans, good mm -hmm. mushroom soup, and then that gelatin. That's a great way to thicken it right up. Mm -hmm. And then you you um you chop up the onions and you put them in the oven until they crisp up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It works. It works really well. Christmas cookies. <laughs> yeah. Um, what? Yeah, what? So we get into changing the flowers out. Um, a lot of them, it's not technically paleo, but we use almond flour or chestnut flour pretty often. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can also use coconut flour, which is highly absorbent. So you usually have to increase the amount of butter and egg yolk that you add to it to keep the cookies from drying out. I don't know if I'm saying it right. There's another flour out there that I've seen in paleo recipes, cassava. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're saying it the right way. And you what use, is it? So I believe it's a root vegetable. Oh. So you can use it the, okay. the same way. It's a one-to-one -one ratio for that. Is it the milk one? Technically, because it comes from nuts, no. Yes. So you'd want to look at coconut milk. But I thought it was our choice. Did I excuse me? Why do I keep saying that? Yeah, so you can use almond milk. Okay, almond milk is good. Yeah. Um, uh, coconut flour is very absorbent, so add more egg and what else? Butter. Butter. Oh. Yeah. Or coconut oil if you're using coconut uh -huh. oil. Yeah. It's very absorbent. First time I tried to make coconut flour cookies, I was so confused because they wouldn't even form. They were crumbling. I know. It's like, what's happening? Me too. Good. All right, let's turn the page. I'm sure. couple of tips and tricks from Drew himself, which is me. It's weird to say Drew himself. Okay. Oils get replaced at a one-to-one -one ratio. If you have some recipe that's telling you to use veggie oil or canola oil, you don't have to throw away the recipe. You just have to avoid using those junk oils. Okay. We'd use butter or coconut oil at a one-to-one -one ratio. You can also use ghee. Okay. Ghee is clarified butter. That's where they cook it a little bit. The protein rises to the top. They skim that off. All you have left is the nutrient and the fat components. If you're looking for ghee, we have it next door. It's also available in most grocery stores. You say ghee butter or what? Coconut oil. Oh, coconut. Yeah. So it calls for three quarters of a cup. You can use three quarters of a cup of oil. Bingo. Yep. Yeah. It'd probably be very delicious then. <laughs> <laughs> the the same next. With olive oil too. Yeah, the olive oil, it's a one-to-one, -one. we just don't want to heat it. Right, it's yeah. just like a drop like But you can use olive oil like in, in making uh, something like a cake or... No, because you're heating it. No. Yeah, we want to avoid putting heat to olive oil. Oh, but so if you're making a, bake, you a salad dressing, dressing or a sauce, you would use olive oil for. Why is that? When we heat olive oil or if olive oil gets heated, it actually becomes a carcinogen. 
and mm -hmm. oxidizes, it becomes a damaged fat, and it confuses the body as how to use fats. The reason that's really bad for us mm -hmm. is our nervous system, including our brain, is predominantly made of fat. Mm -hmm. We don't need any more confusion in our brain. <laughs> All right, the next one says replace thickeners like cornstarch with Great Lakes gelatin in the orange container, which I have right up here for you. The gelatin benefits your intestines and your immune system, while the cornstarch only irritates those areas. Typically, 50 to 75% of the amount will be needed when using gelatin. So, if your recipe said two cups of cornstarch, which would be ridiculous, but just for example, <laughs> just using easy numbers here, folks, you would only need a cup to a cup and a half of the gelatin. But if you have a recipe that calls for two cups of cornstarch, I've got to see that recipe <laughs> feeding an army. <laughs> that would be good with stir fries, wouldn't it? To thicken? To thicken? Yeah. Yeah, that would be really good. Next one says make real stuffing. It is the tastiest way to eat organ meats. If you're thinking, Drew, I don't need organ meats, then we need to talk about your supplement program, okay? There's a lot of nutrients in these organ meats. A lot of things that benefit our kidneys, our liver, our intestines, even our skin. So if you're getting a turkey, look for a good one, pasture raised, keep the organ meats and turn it into the dressing or stuffing, whichever term you use. The next one says use Gerolsteiner, Apolnaris, or Perrier instead of club soda. Those brands listed provide nutrient and are naturally carbonated. Club soda is artificially carbonated. Now recently I found out that Gerolsteiner is not exclusively naturally carbonated. So I'd say strike that one from your hand out. Okay. What about Perrier? Yeah, we want to avoid the aluminum can. The Perrier in the glass bottle is ideal because yeah. there's no leaching then of the junk from the can. The glass doesn't leach. But it's really good. Every year I teach a class on uh, how to be a bartender in the healthiest way possible. Not that alcohol is healthy, okay? <laughs> but in the healthiest way possible. <laughs> and one of my big pieces of advice is use sparkling mineral water because there's actually nutrient in there that it neutralizes or counteracts the alcohol. <laughs> but again, it's <laughs> better. <laughs> Do you seltzer water? Is that so? I would rather use sparkling mineral water. But, but so, like, it's not a bad thing. It's just not getting in minerals. Yeah, it's not a good thing, is what I would say. Oh, Whereas the mineral water is good for you. But it's not like having a club soda. Is it so better than having clubs have seltzer over a club soda? I'm gonna put them on the same level. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So go with that sparkling mineral water. So it's still better, like, yeah, if you're in a bar or something, say, give me whatever mineral water you have, that would still be better than the seltzer or... Yeah. Well, oh, just yeah. Here, when you're out somewhere, if you got a or something. Yeah. So, so I don't drink that, so it is the, the Perrier, or if I'm saying that right, that's mineral. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's fizzy. Okay, I've seen the other one. The apple nar is that just kind of everywhere? Sendix, like, pick and save. Okay. It's, it's a, a green bottle. glass bottle. Okay. I know the other two, but... Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Next one says, cut the sugar. Most recipes on boxes and magazines and on television are created by companies that sell sugar. The amount of sugar can easily be reduced by half in most recipes. So of course, if the sugar company made the recipe, they're going to want you to use their product a lot so that you buy more of their product. It's logical. I get it. It's business. I get it. But it's not good for you. So I don't like it. <laughs> you can usually reduce the sugar content. And when you use sources like this, I put maple syrup, I got out Rapidura, which is unrefined cane sugar. It's like if you kept the brown sugar in the sugar with the minerals. So again, not that sugar's good for you, but we got minerals now, it's better for you. And then of course, raw honey. Raw honey has enzymes in it, has minerals in it. In most recipes, one of these three, you can swap it out at a one-to-one -one ratio, and it's mm -hmm. gonna taste really great, and it's not gonna jazz you up. It's not like getting straight white sugar. And that's what the next one says, replace the sugar with one of these three. These sweeteners provide nutrient instead of stealing nutrient from your body. It's white sugar actually robs nutrient from your body's tissues. We don't want to do that. Try to take care of yourself, not deplete yourself. Next one, this is how I make my turkey, in case you were wondering. 
The butter goes under the skin at the top of the bird. The butter will melt and gravity will work it downward while the bird is in the oven. I personally mix thyme and rosemary into the butter for a particularly delicious roast turkey. I got this recipe from Martha Stewart. <laughs> there was a little bit of junk in it, and that was like six or seven years ago now. And I kept refining it, I kept making it more and more drew. And what I eventually found out actually was that just rosemary and thyme tasted better when I was adding other seasonings in addition to it. Mm -hmm. It just complements the taste of the turkey meat. And how much butter are you putting in? So it depends on the size of the turkey, sure. but usually I'm making a 12 to 15 pound bird mm -hmm. and I'm putting a half pound of butter in it. So you could do that with a chicken too, right? Oh yeah. You do it with a quail, a duck, a chicken, all of them. Okay. Yeah. That'd be really good. Let me know when you're doing it. I'll come over. <laughs> I will let you know. Awesome. <laughs> how much rosemary and thyme have you put? That's, that's personal preference. Um, a 12 to 15 pound bird, I'm doing at least a tablespoon of each. I might even be going up to two tablespoons of each. Do you salt the inside of your birds? I used to. Um, I'm a big fan of, of sea salt. Um, yeah. I, I stopped because I found the taste was better without it. The salt's on the table, so if somebody wants it, it's there. Okay. We covered this on the first page, but sweet potatoes are nutritionally more sound than white potatoes. Grated cauliflower is nutritionally more sound than rice. And for that matter, grated cauliflower or mashed cauliflower is nutritionally more sound than white potatoes also. And then pumpkin pie is going to be better for you than all other pies. Pumpkin actually has a lot of nutrients that benefits the intestines, especially at Thanksgiving when people are stuffing their face. <laughs> your intestines will take all the help they can get. Okay? <laughs> what about canned pumpkin? What do you think about it? You got to look for it to be BPA liner free. There are a lot of companies nowadays that are coming out with organic. I know that Sendix carries it. I know that Whole Foods carries it. Outpost carries yes, it. Outpost has a BPA liner free. Yeah. yeah that's what my dog There you go. Very good. It's always on sale this time here. Yes. Really cheap this time here. Yes. Please buy this stock up on there this time here. Mm -hmm. There's always sales on that one, and it's a good amount off. That's the way to do it. <laughs> Do most of the cans say that if they are? Yeah, if they are, they're proud of it because they mm -hmm. want you to know that they're aware that it could be bad for you. Okay. Yeah. Good questions on the tips and tricks page. What you can do on pumpkin pie is yeah. you can bake it in mannequins with a lot of crust. There you go. Mm -hmm. you scoop it right out. Yeah. Pat of butter right in the middle of it right before you serve it when it's still warm. <laughs> now we're talking. Now we're talking. Put butter on. <laughs> what is it better with butter? Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's flip the page over. So this page is something I just added for this here, for this class. It says, consider the dirty dozen of produce and buy these organic. All right, so we're going to have company over, right? We may not be making all the food ourselves. So when you're thinking about like, okay, I'm trying to do like a really nutritious meal, but aunt so-and-so or cousin so-and-who are bringing this dish, avoid giving them the responsibility of using <laughs> these dirty dozen, okay? Because <laughs> they might not buy organic, yeah. right? Okay? Right. <laughs> you be responsible for these, because I know that you'll buy organic spinach or organic cherries or organic tomatoes, okay? These ones, loads of pesticides are put on them. Very, very bad for you to get that much pesticide. So we're gonna get those organic. Now below that, I have considered the clean 15 for guests who are not keen on organic produce. Okay, so this list of 15 are the dishes you give to the person who will not buy organic, who doesn't really care about organic. Maybe just doesn't know yet, and needs to come to one of these classes. These foods might not all be dedicated to holiday eating, but we do see if you can send them the mashed cauliflower recipe, they don't even have to buy organic cauliflower. If they're willing to make eggplant, if they're willing to, well here would be a good one, um, the green bean casserole, because the onions that go on top of there, it's not a big deal. Maybe they'll just show up with the asparagus. Give them one of these, because it doesn't have to be organic the way the Dirty Dozen should really be organic. This list is as of 2016, 
Every year there's a company that actually measures the pesticide content of non-organic foods, uh, produce, excuse me, and then releases that list. So this is for 2016. Next year it'll be different. Right. Yeah. So broccoli, it's preferred to get it organic because um, my understanding is that bugs prefer broccoli over cantaloupe. That's why cantaloupe is on the clean 15 and broccoli isn't. I thought we read once where broccoli didn't matter because even bugs wouldn't eat broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like an article written by an eight year old who doesn't want to finish. It's full yeah. of worms. Okay. Oh, yeah. What, what was that? It's full of worms. Broccoli? Yeah. I think oh, it meant, yes. Yeah, yeah. First hand experience right here. Oh, gross. Good. Questions on the dirty dozen and the clean 15. All right, assign wisely. <laughs> Pages of recipes. So we're not going to read through these or try to figure out how to make all these, but I will call them out. If you have a question as you glance through it, raise your hand and ask. The first one is the paleo pumpkin pie. Like I said, I made this and there were three pumpkin pies out on the table. This was the first one to disappear. People went nuts for it. It's really easy to make too. The next one on here is the paleo pie crust. Whatever pie you're making, even if it isn't pumpkin, we determine that pumpkin pie is the best of the pies to make. But maybe your family is really into apple. Okay, cool. Get some organic Granny Smiths. Use this paleo pie crust. For the record, if you're doing a Granny Smith apple pie, it's very tart. Sometimes maple syrup cuts the tartness of the Granny Smith better than a honey. Mm -hmm. You might want to do that next 4th of July if you're making apple pie then. Another good ingredient for pie crust is the uh, ground pecan. Oh, yeah. Instead of almond. Oh, absolutely. And yeah, that would be delicious. Especially with pumpkin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Next one on here is a simple cranberry sauce. I know somebody asked about that earlier. This one, really take your time with it. Uh, simmer it slowly. Simmer it lowly, so to speak. It tastes really quite good. Really quite good. Next page, we got sweet potato pancakes instead of just potato pancakes. This catches people off guard because it tastes so good. I use this recipe year-round, actually, and I fry them up because I don't eat buns when I have burgers. So Memorial Day, uh, Labor Day, Fourth of July, times when I'm grilling out of my house, I actually will make these and serve food on those instead of using buns. Now, I still buy buns because some of my family still eats grains, but for people who want to avoid that, there's another option. So use that recipe year-round. It's also great to put underneath eggs for breakfast. Mm -hmm. You still only need one frying pan to do it because they'll stay warm long enough for the time it took cooks to fry up a couple eggs. Cool. Really tasty. Does coconut oil cook differently than other oils? Yes, coconut oil tolerates heat very well. Not all oils do. So when it comes to heat, the most popular oils that I promote, because they tolerate heat well, coconut, palm, butter, pinky. What about bacon? Oh yeah, bacon, <laughs> lard, that sort of, uh, duck schmaltz, duck fat, okay. chicken schmaltz, chicken fat. A lot of yeah. Sounds good, when am I coming over? <laughs> <laughs> See, I've heard your husband talk about your cooking. <laughs> I, when am I coming over? <laughs> I try and experiment all the time. Excellent. <laughs> Next one on here is bacon wrapped dates and pineapple. That's another one appetizer wise. Oh man, put these out. Ooh, they will disappear. They will absolutely disappear. If you flip the page, this is a really good one. This is turkey stuffed peppers. In this recipe, we have ground turkey but you could also just shred the bird when it comes to leftovers. Yeah. So if you've got a bunch of turkey left over on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, the way most of us do, mm -hmm. use the same recipe, just use the shredded turkey meat. It's equally delicious. In years past, when I would try to finish up the leftover turkey, I'd get sick of it. Mm -hmm. Having a recipe like this makes it a lot easier to eat it because it's really quite tasty. And it tastes nothing like a typical Thanksgiving meal. So it's not like I have that same taste on my palate for a week straight. It's a nice variety. 
Could you do it with rice bread, beef, as well? Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Chicken, you could do it with lamb, you could do whatever. Yeah. yeah, go nuts with it. All right, so questions, comments, concerns. What do you got? Is there an easier way to shred sweet potatoes? <laughs> what, does it, what do people use? I use my Set cheese grater. Yeah, that's fast. I know. Yeah, I need to get a workout at the same time. <laughs> workout. Keep the triceps in shape. <laughs> <laughs> it just, just takes forever. I'm just thinking if there's something else to do. Big dick to it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what Spiralizer. Do you have a spiralizer? Sure. I don't, and I was thinking of getting that. I like it. Yeah. I know at State Fair every year there's yeah. a super efficient grater <laughs> product yeah. that slices and dices and even like pet gives you a pedicure. Yeah. 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 I know that's that's a downside of some of those appliances. You know. It's kind of like putting up wallpaper. You move the air bubble that's stuck underneath it over, and now it's on the next Don't sheet. Use <laughs> Other questions come to mind. Yes, a lot of good ones along the way. So. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, do we have copies of the breakfast handout? We do. There was not the, the coconut flour bread. There were muffins on it. Okay, so let's look at that. <laughs> Jeff used to put in... And that's not to say it's not on the computer. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's not in here. It was a Jeff recipe, and I'm trying to remember. It was coconut bread? Well, it was almond flour bread, and if I'm remembering the ingredients correctly, it was something really simple like butter, egg, and the flour. And then you had to bake it. But I feel like I'm missing one yeah, important you ingredient. Something to raise it? No, because it's really dense, it's really okay. thick, and that's mm -hmm. part of the reason it's so good at stuffing, because mm -hmm. okay. it soaks up the juices, and it, okay. it takes on the taste of the juices. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll look for that. And if we don't find it today, we got a list of everybody who is here. We'll make sure you get a copy of it. Yeah, so that makes a big difference. And that gets a little bit tricky when you're mass producing food. But Andy mentioned making high quality choices, uh, choosing high quality meats, grass fed beef, and then pasture raised birds. We want birds that are out walking around in the field eating bugs and rocks and dirt and stuff because that's what birds were built to eat, <laughs> okay? Uh, most butcher shops, you can ask them if they have that stuff. There's a butcher that just opened uh, by Saz's. Do you know where Saz's is? Yeah. They have some incredible stuff in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amazing, high quality meats, properly made things. Uh, bone broth that's ready to go, so if you're looking to make uh, dressing, a stuffing, a gravy, it's ready to go, it's made the right way. Swing down there, stock up, it's good, it's really good. The bone broth is outstanding. Yeah. I was sick and I went there, I just heard about it and it's really, really good. Yeah. What's the name of it? Do you know? Kettle Range. Thank you. Kettle Range. Kettle Range. Meats. Kettle range meats. That's oh, okay. Kettle, or just yeah. kettle Range. Yes. And it's right next to the right yeah. We have like grass fed beef. Well. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Now, is it better to have pasture raised bird or an organic bird? Like, you gotta pick one mm -hmm. or the other. Yeah, that's tricky. What's the so, if it's only saying organic, that bird may have been raised in a cage mm -hmm. and fed organic junk food. Right. So, I'm going to say pasture raised. Yeah, even even so with so funny about their titched birds. Would and I'm not sure. Is it, It's just an a bird from an older. Family. Species, um, not um, crossbred, that stuff. I just got an email today from Grass Way Organic. Yeah. And they have turkeys that will not be frozen. You can order them, and they're all pasteurized. He's he's very conscientious about what he yeah. feeds his poultry. Grass Way Organics. Yeah. You know where it is? It's in. Isn't that in Yeah, I think it's somewhere out there. Yeah. They have incredible products. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they yeah. They care for their animals. Yeah. So he has products. them. Had them available today. If you want to place your order, he just delivered to Mequon somewhere. Oh, cool. In the next okay. Couple weeks. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Yeah. yeah. So okay. Yeah. Very good. Lots of ideas. Yeah. Very good. Well, I appreciate all of you coming out. Thank you so much. Is the store open now? Yeah, the store's open, so we can stack up on okay. stuff. And go do some good upon the world. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.